Hey everybody, welcome back to Recordology. Okay, my goal for today is to talk less and show more. So without further ado, let's check out this awesome new turntable from Victrola. You're not gonna wanna miss this. Kind of interesting. It looks like it took a trip on Qatar Airways from Hong Kong to LAX. So it's been across the ocean. iTech, of course, standing for Innovative Technology, who owns the Victrola name. This is the VPro 2000 in black. Number of unit, one piece, 9.81 kilograms. And kind of interesting that they took the time and effort to put a sticker of a black star on the box. Not sure why. All right, let's take a look inside, you guys. This box does look a bit ragged. Um, <laughs> it's probably had quite a journey to make it all the way from China to Colorado. Hopefully it's packed well and its contents undisturbed, but we will see in just a second here. How are you guys doing, by the way? How's everything in your world? <coughs> Excuse me. Awesome, we got some retail packaging. How are you guys handling the quarantine? Getting a bit stir crazy, I have to admit. Although I do enjoy having time to work on projects, but. Okay, so here is the packaging. I like it, it's sharp. Looks like we got a three speed turntable. That's interesting, so it does do 78. Diamond stylus is gonna be an Audio-Technica stylus. RCA outputs. You can record from vinyl to USB, so it's gonna have a copy of Audacity, blah, 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 blah. But again, less talking, more showing, time to open it up. All right, let's see if I can manage to open this up efficiently. You know, there's something weird about opening things up on camera, I'm terrible at it. For those of you who have been along for the journey, you know. Okay, so here's the user manual, some cables, all that good stuff. And this card right here, they also put one in the packing slip. It's pretty neat because you get 20% off your next purchase and a free gift. So hold on to that for sure. Accessories and the main unit itself. Let's go ahead and slide it out. Everything looks to be well packed. We shall see. It's very tightly packed, I can tell you that. Okay, there's the platter on the bottom. Now, if in case you're wondering, this is gonna be comparable to like a Crosley C100, which I really like that product. I think that that is a great product. So I'm curious to see how Victrola competes with that. Okay. Here is the lid, it's got the cover. We'll take that off separately. Here is the turntable itself. Wow, it's a little bigger than I thought. Look at that, oh, it's awesome. I love it. Look at that. I just love this moment when you see it for the first time, you guys. It's heavy, so I feel like this must have the, the metal weights like the LP120 does. Obviously, this is meant to compete with an LP120 or a C100. And it's probably made by handpin, I'm just guessing. We might be able to, if we find a uh, FCC ID, we can verify that. And then we've got the platter, which feels solid. Okay, cool. So see these teeth in here? Those teeth help the unit, with the use of an optical sensor, verify the speed and maintain the speed. That is cool. I feel like that's a steel platter. Um, it does have strobe dots and it does have a strobe light. So this is really, really cool. Let's take a closer look. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, start to assemble this and we'll see where we go okay. from there. So here is a closer look of what's underneath the platter. So we've got our spindle. This is what supports the platter. This is that optical sensor that aligns with those teeth underneath the platter to make sure the speed is consistent. And over here is the motor pulley. So that's a little brass um, cog, I guess you would call it, that's attached to a shaft that goes directly into the electric motor. The reason why they put them way over here is so that it's nowhere along the path that the tone arm travels. So it keeps the vibration of the motor away from this. By the way, I wanna tell you that this is awesome. They include a metal 45 adapter 
And I'm so glad to see that because so many turntables, even nice ones, will put in plastic 45 adapters. And I say go the extra mile. It's a nice little aluminum one. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is put the platter on. The platter has these nice little finger holes here. This is hard to do while looking at the camera at the same time, so bear with me as I fumble my way through it. There you go. And see how that's flush now, or just about flush? And these gaps over here allow you to put the pulley on. So let's take a closer look at that. Put the belt on the pulley. But So the belt right now is on the sub platter. That's that little inner piece down there. Sometimes they give you a little tool to do this, sometimes not. All you need to do is take that belt and stretch it around there. It's important that you make sure that the belt is laying flat on the sub platter. You don't want there to be it. You don't want it to be flipped over or anything like that because that can impact the speed. All right, that's it. This is a little sticker in the wrong spot telling me to do what we just did. So let's go ahead and put it all back together. You know what I don't see is a platter mat. <laughs> I'm gonna look through the packaging again and make sure there's no hiding platter mat because that's kind of bizarre. Okay, I found it. Good news, it was in there. We're just hiding in the packaging material. And it's really a nice one. I've never seen anything quite like this. It's kind of rubber on the back. It's got some heft to it. And this is like a felt, a very fine felt with their name stamped in it. So that just goes right on top. That gives some grip and some cushion to the record. And that's about it. Uh, we need to take off this little piece of tape that was on the stylus. There's a little plastic guard down here. This is an Audio-Technica moving magnetic cartridge, which is good. This is an upgrade from those red tip styluses, styli, which are ceramic. And that's a different show for a different day what the difference is, but this is what you want. So when you see these Audio-Technica white tipped styluses, styli, it's a better thing. While we're in this neck of the woods, I wanna show you this. This is called a pitch slider. So when you slide this up and down, it changes the speed of the motor, thereby changing the pitch of the record. And why would you want to do that? We'll show you that in a little bit. There's an adjustment here to change the control of this slider from 10% up and down to 20% up and down. Quartz lock, so it's got essentially a quartz clock built in that once you achieve that speed that you're looking for, this helps regulate it with that optical eye. And then up here, volume controls, which is interesting. That's because I believe this has Bluetooth. It says pair, so I'm assuming it's a uh, pairing button for the Bluetooth and volume controls as well. But the next thing we need to do actually is balance the tone arm. And before I forget it, this little sheet that's on the platter when you buy it is really helpful because it shows you some basic instructional information, including photographs. I don't think I've ever seen one of these with actual photographs on it, but you've also got the owner's manual, which can go into even more detail. But I'm gonna show you the basics here. So what we need to do is balance the tone arm. So when you get a nicer record player like this one, you are a turntable. What's the difference between a record player and a turntable? I say a record player has built-in speakers, a turntable does not. But anyway, setting up a turntable, you need to put this counterbalance on. This is what controls the downforce. So this is what controls how much pressure the needle, the stylus is pushing down on the record. And you need to make sure that it's set appropriately. But the first thing you gotta do is balance it. So I put the counterbalance on with the numbers facing forward. Then we need to find a float point. That is the point where it's completely balanced by moving that forward and back. And we want the tone arm just to completely balance in space without going up or down. There we go. So once we've attained the float point or the balance point, put it back in the rest, put the clip on. And now on the back here, you're gonna see these numbers. Let's take a closer look there. So now that we know that it's zeroed out, we need to hold the back of this, which is metal, and this little plastic piece on the front rotates freely. So we need to, ca we're calibrating is what we're doing. So we're setting it to zero because we know it's balanced at zero. Then we can turn the whole thing like this, which will apply the downforce. And this stylus, has a range that it works on, but we're gonna put two grams of downforce on it, just like that. So now the needle is gonna have two grams of downforce. Comparatively, like a suitcase player puts about five to six grams of downforce, so this is a lot lighter. It'll be a lot gentler on your record. So let's go ahead and take a look at the start and stop controls as well as the speed control. Now I do love these labels that they are putting on here, but I tried to pull this off and it separated onto the plinth, which it's not great. I wish it didn't do that. Now we can get it up, but that's annoying. Okay, moving on. Another thing that's really important is the anti-skate knob. You need to set that initially to the same value as your counterbalance, which in this case is two. 
what this does is it fights a natural tendency that the turntable has. So left to its own devices, this tone arm is gonna to wanna to pull towards the inside. And you don't want it pulling inside or out because that'll push on the inner or outer grooves and not give you optimal sound, it'll wear out your records. You want it to be completely neutral, just like it's floating up and down neutrally earlier. You want it left to right movements uh, to be neutral. So the way that this system does that, the way that these record players do that is by applying force uh, one way or another, and that's done with this. So make sure that you match that. And then I've done separate videos where I go into more detail about how to set these. It's really easy. You just put a smooth surface, like a flat uh, one-sided record, smooth record surface, or like an acrylic platter mat, and then just adjust this with the thing spinning until it stops moving on its own, until it's completely neutral. But this is a good starting point. Let's look at the back panel while we're at it. So here is the back panel. And the back panel, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit here. So the back panel is gonna be where you connect your speakers. This is gonna require external speakers. So you have to hook it up to powered speakers or to a stereo system. It does have a built-in preamp. Remember when I said earlier that the magnetic cartridges are the way to go? That is true. However, they output a lower line, they output a lower voltage than a red tip stylus. So they require a built-in preamp. So that basically takes it from the phono level, which it comes in at, and outputs it to a higher level. So most likely, you're gonna want to use the built-in preamp by turning that on. That will then increase the voltage on the output to match a stereo input or powered speaker input. If you have an external preamp, you can flip it off and use an external preamp. Some people will think that's a they swear by those. They think they sound better, blah, 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 blah. I personally can't really hear that much of a difference. Uh, or if you have an older stereo that has a phono input into it, the lower input, you can turn this off as well and connect it. Here's the USB where you can uh, use the Audacity software. They include a disc, although it's free to download as well. And uh, we've done separate videos on that. We won't review it today. But you can connect it to your computer and record um, your records as MP3s and edit them, clean them up. And there's the power. And that's really about it, guys. So let's go ahead and uh, take this over to my laboratory, fire it up, and give it a sound test as well. Okay, welcome back to the land of low light but high ideals. I've got it connected now to the Crosley S100 speakers. Bit of irony there, because they are competitors. Um, however, and, and, and additionally, it's sitting on top of an Audio-Technica LP120. So we're going for the trifecta of irony here. So I've got it connected. And, um, you know, I wanted to go over a couple of specs. Kind of interesting, it does have an AC power supply, which it's still a DC motor, it's a DC servo motor, but the transformer is built into the unit. So a lot of people don't like those wall warts. This just uses a straight AC cable connected to the back. Wow and flutter on this particular unit is less than 0.25%. We talked about the magnetic cartridge, blah, 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 blah. It does have Bluetooth, so it'll stream Bluetooth. It'll send Bluetooth to external speakers. Again, not really a whole lot of point of going over that here because it's gonna sound the same as just playing a record, but it does have that capability. It uses a little bit older uh, version of Bluetooth. It uses 4.2 and 4.0, I believe, but the codec used within that connection should uh, allow for a good you know, transmission of Bluetooth to your external Bluetooth speakers. Of course, when you go Bluetooth with a turntable, you lose analog because it's a digital encoding and decoding process. All right, enough of that. Let's go ahead and turn it on. Uh, the power switch is this nice button down here. Well, it's a power button, not a switch. And I love it. Blue light. That looks really, really cool, you guys. I think that's so far the coolest um, strobe light I've seen. Now, when I say strobe light, that means that this is uh, a light that's connected, obviously, to the same power supply that the record is rotating in. So you could use a lamp uh, plugged into the same you know, power supply, into the same wall outlet, and get the same effect. But this is really handy to have it built in down here. And this is start and stop switch for the platter. So you've got two switches, on and off, and then start and stop. Now let's take a closer look at that strobe, and I'll explain what okay. that is. So you're going to see two sets of dots. You're going to see one for 50 hertz power, which would be places like the UK, and one for 60 hertz power, which would be places like Japan, the United States. So we need to pay attention to our ring. So what's going to happen next is we are, and I'm off camera here, not off camera, but over here, I'm going to be adjusting the speed using the pitch slider. 
That's what controls the speed, and then you use the light to verify that speed. And the idea is that you can make sure that your record's rotating at exactly 33 or exactly 45 or whatever the case may be. I'm a little curious here because there's only two rows of dots and it says 33 and 45, yet this claims to be a 78 RPM record player. So we'll see how that works here in a minute. But first we need to look for these dots. See how they're all kind of moving, they're all jumbled up. So this thing is not rotating at 33 or anything else right now. I'm gonna make that adjustment to that pitch slider on the right until those dots fall into place, which so far they are not. We gotta find that spot. Okay, I am adjusting the controls. Okay, this is kind of tricky to film, so bear with me. We're looking at the lower band here and the smaller dots. So the top row of dots, and I'm adjusting that pitch slider, and then you're gonna see those row of dots slow down and become stationary. It's kind of blurry. But in actual real life, I can see that better. So once we get that locked in, you will see it get clear, I hope. You can't tell me that doesn't look good. That light up logo on the front, that is sick. I love it, really cool. All right, let's give it a sound test. That's the big grand finale here, and I'll give you my thoughts after that. So let's go ahead and play a couple of records. Obviously it's gonna be little clips because I can't, you know, Copyright issues. I can't show too much or, you know, demonstrate too much. But here we go. A couple of records acoustically recorded in the room here. See what you guys think. Okay, guys, we're going to listen to a little Sinatra, one for my baby here. It does have a cueing lever, so that's a little lever here that allows you to raise and lower the stylus gently. See how it's pulling to the outside? That's that anti skate. So you could fine tune that, but for today's demonstration, we don't need to. Wow, that thing drops hard and fast, dude. That's a bit fast. <laughs> It shouldn't drop quite that fast. Oh, it comes down and bounces. Okay, let's listen to it though. Oops. Okay, we have a few problems here. One, that's way slow. Listen to that. That sounds terrifying. Second thing is it's very quiet. It's very, very quiet. So I wonder if I have that preamp switch backwards. Okay, that was... Okay, it shouldn't sound like that. It shouldn't sound like that. What am I thinking is happening here? I think we're using probably the 50 hertz band of dots on here. So I'm gonna recalibrate to the upper and see if that helps. Okay, I calibrated to that second row and listen to this. Okay, so that sounds like Mickey Mouse here. We got problems. So I'm thinking the lower range of dots was correct, but for whatever reason, the pitch is just way off on this unit. I'm gonna go back to that same row of dots there and see if we can it shouldn't crash down like that it's terrible okay I know this record is 33 <laughs> it's not a 45 rpm record according to this it's spinning at that says it's at 33 RPMs. I'm wondering if these dots are bogus or incorrect for whatever reason. So I'm gonna take an external strobe disc that I trust and test it on there. Okay, so we got the, and by the way, I'm using a different mic now, that's why it sounds a little more hollow. So I'm using the Hudson Hi-Fi disc. This should be calibrated to 33 RPM. Boy, it just seems like it's having a hard time rotating. That is really, really weird. Okay, so the inner ring is gonna be 50 hertz. The outer ring is what we're concerned about. So right now, it looks like it's at about 45 RPM. <laughs> um, so we're gonna slow this down until that outer, outer ring goes stationary. Okay, very finicky, but I think, as you can see, that inner ring there looks stationary. So we're going to hope for the best. 
take this off, put Frank Sinatra back on, and hopefully he sounds like Frank Sinatra and not Mickey Mouse. So here we go. I'm going to pan over to the right a little bit here so you can see the tone arm stylus come down. This thing is coming down so hard. It bounces. It comes down so hard. Okay, so we should be the right pitch finally. It would help if we could actually hear a vocal. Whoa. That is it. Okay, it's wrong. It's completely wrong. It's completely wrong. I have no idea what the, this is so off. Okay, I figured out what the heck is happening here. Turns out that this strobe is completely useless. It doesn't show accurate information. It's not helpful. However, if I zero out the slider, the pitch is fine. So that's kind of bizarre. I don't know why it's doing that, but um, I would like to see a functioning strobe. I mean, that's a really cool idea. That's where it should be. It should function, but obviously there's a couple of issues. It may just be my unit, but that's not great. All right, guys, so that was disappointing, honestly. Um, I love the look of it. I love the design of it. It has some great features that it's you know competitors don't have at that price point. But that strobe and the speed, it's just, it's just an unacceptable problem. It may be just this unit. We'll have to see how Victrola responds to this. I'm not sure if they want us to take a little look at it, if it was a singular issue or if it's an actual design flaw. I'm not sure. I will say this, um, the sound quality, once I got the pitch set, it was a little harsh. It was okay. You know, it, wasn't, it wasn't terrible, but it was harsh. It was kind of like bright, overly bright sounding. There's obviously a lot of factors playing into that. But there you go, guys. Anyway, it's fun. I love looking at this stuff. I love seeing what's out there, regardless of how it turns out. But I don't know what you guys think. But I think that Victrola is onto something here. And I think that, you know, given the right circumstances, they can definitely make this a winner. They have so many awesome products out there. So many great things we reviewed. And I'm really looking forward to seeing what else they come up with. But that's it for now, guys. Happy record hunting. Happy record listening. Although maybe soon happy record hunting. But for right now, happy record listening. Hang in there, guys. Stay safe. And we'll talk to you next time.